fails the brutal feudal system holy crusades bubonic plague can see that we really miss them so dark and barbaric so dull and mundane that will show middle ages that was so and bon vivants and merry minstrels who stroll the streets of London a strum in their lutes in puffy pants and pointy leather boots welcome to the renaissance where we ooh and ah you with ambience we're so progressive the latest and the greatest we bring them to you with much ado welcome to the renaissance where everything is
music be the food of love. Play on. Give me excess of it. That surfeiting. That appetite may sicken and so fall. That strain again has a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet south that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea, not enters there, of what validity and pitch so were, that falls into abatement at a low price, even in a minute, so high in shape is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine the gentle fine is this my lips two blushing pilgrims ready to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss good pilgrim you do wrong your hand too much which in manly devotion show is this for saints have hands that pilgrims hands do touch and upon the palm is holy palmer's have not saints lips, and holy farmers too? I pilgrim lips they must use in prayer. Oh, then dear saint, let lips do what hands do, for they pray, grant thou lest faith turn into despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus, from my lips, by yours, my sin is purged again. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from thy lips, O trespass, sweetly urged, give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. scorn me do not phoebe say you love me not but say not so in bitterness the common executioner whose heart the accustomed sight of death makes hard falls not the axe upon the humbled neck but first begs pardon and will you sterner be than he that dies and lives by bloody drops i would not be the executioner i fly thee for i would not injure thee thou tellest me there is murder in mine eyes tis pretty sure and very probable that I are the frailest and softest of things who shut their tower gates on enemies should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart, and if mine eyes can wound, now let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon, why now fall down? Or if thou canst not, oh for shame, for shame, lie not to say mine eyes are murderers. Now show the wounds mine eye hath made in thee, scratch thee but with a pin, and there remains some scar of it, clean but upon a brush, the cicatrices and capable and pressure that calm some moment keeps. But now mine eyes, which I have dirted, they hurt thee not, as I am sure there is no force in eyes that can be hurt. 
Oh dear Phoebe, if ever, as ever may be near, if you meet in some fresh cheek a new power of fancy, then shall you know the wounds invisible that love's keen arrows make. But till that time come not thou near me, and when the time comes afflict me with thy mocks, pity me not, is till the time I shall not pity thee. Nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange is the thing I know not. If it were as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you, but believe me not, and yet I lie not, I confess nothing. Nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it, I protest I love thee. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. from her. So please, my lord, I do return this answer. Till seven years hence she will season a brother's dead love. But the duke thinks that so much love for a brother means Olivia will love a husband even more, especially himself. <laughs> oh, she hath the heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. How can she love with, hmm, oneself king? Wah! friend is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? <laughs> my brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he's not drowned. Oh, my poor brother. To comfort you, I saw your brother bind himself to a strong mast, where, like Orion on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so, there's gold. Knowest thou this country? Who governs here? A noble duke, Orsino, 
Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And was so very late. Months ago, he did seek the love of fair Olivia, the daughter of a count that died, leaving her in the protection of her brother, who shortly also had died. And for whose very dear loss, they say, she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady. No, 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 she will not follow suit. Not the dukes. But Viola needs a place to stay. <laughs> she decides to disguise herself as a page boy and have the captain recommend her to the duke. Captain, I prithee, conceal me what I am and be my aid in such disguise. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me to him, for I can sing and speak and many sorts of music that will allow me to reward his service. You're mute, Alvi. I thank thee. Lead me on. To the lady of the duke's garden, her drunken uncle, what the plague means to my niece to take the death of her brother thus? By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier on night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours, and of a foolish night you brought here one night to be her wooer. Who? Sir Andrew? Why... He has three thousand ducats a year! He's a very fool, and he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking helps to my niece. I'll drink to her, as long as there's a passage in my throat. It drinks in Illyria. A stoop of wine, Mariah. What wench? Here comes Sir Andrew! Sir Toby Bell! Oh, how now, Sir Toby? <laughs> Bless you, fair shrew. Oh. <laughs> My fair lady, dost thou think you have fools in hand? <laughs> Sir, I have not you by the hand. Fare you well, gentlemen. O oh, knight, when did I see thee so put down? Also, Sir Andrew has no luck trying to get Lady Olivia to marry him. <laughs> I write out tomorrow morning. Faith, your niece will not be seen. Otherwise, at four to one, she'll none of me. Tut! There's life in it, man! <laughs> yeah. I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revelry, sometimes all together. What is thy excellence? Faith, I can cut a caper. Where forth are these things hid? Show me thy caper. Ha! Oh, excellent! Higher! <laughs> yes, excellent! <laughs> Cesario, ho! On your attendance, my lord! Cesario, thou knowest all. I have unclasped to thee my secret soul. According to the custom of the time, the Duke wants the page, Cesario, to go to Olivia and plead for her to marry the Duke. <laughs> Therefore, good youth, stand at your doors. Uh, sure, my noble lord. She will never admit me. Be clamorous. Unfold the passion of my love. Act my woes. Dear lad, prosper well. This. I'll do my best to woo your lady. <laughs> Yet a barful strife. Whoever I woo would myself be his wife. So Viola, in love with the Duke herself, was trying to get Olivia to marry him. But they have servant trouble at Lady Olivia's house. Nay, tell me where thou hast been. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Ah, yes, and many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. Peace, you rogue. Here comes my lady. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellas? Take away the lady. Sir, I bade them take away. 
Hey, you! Good Madonna, allow me to prove you a fool. <laughs> Can you do it? Ah. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, my brother's death. But I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know, his soul is in heaven, fool. The more the fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. <laughs> Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> Marvel, your ladyship takes delight in such a rascal. Oh, you are sick of self love, Malvolio. There is no slander in an old loud fool. Madam, there's a young gentleman at the gate much desires to speak with you. Go, you. Malvolio, if it be a suit from the count, I am sick or not at home. <laughs> My mind, honor, half drunk cousin. Well, it is all in one. <laughs> Go seek my cuz. He's drowned. Nay, he's but mad, Madonna. And the fool shall look to the mad man. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. Now, I, I, I told him you were sick, but he seems to <laughs> take it on himself to understand as much and therefore come to speak with you. And I, I told him you were asleep, but he seems to have more knowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What could be said to him later? Of what years and personage is he? Uh, not yet old enough for a man nor young enough for a boy. Let him approach. Give me my veil. <clears throat> the honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Most radiant exquisite and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. Whence came you, sir? I could say little more than I've studied, and that question's out of my part. Are you a comedian? No. Are you the lady of the house? I am. Then I will honor my speech in your praise. It alone concerns your ear. Give us this place alone. Now, sir, wherein lies your test? In Orsino's heart. Ugh, I've read it. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. You are now out of your test. But we will draw the curtain. And show you the picture. Look now, sir. Is not well done. Excellently done. If God did all, she'll endure wind and weather. <laughs> Tis beauty truly blent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Viola thinks Olivia should marry, so she can have children to inherit her youth. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, and you will leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried as item, two lips, indifferent red. As item, two eyes with lids on them. As item, one neck and chin and so forth. I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. 
My lord and master loves you. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, mm -hmm. such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Viola tells how she would woo a lover. Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of condemned love, and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Holla your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortune. Yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. Let him send no more. Unless you come to me again too. Tell me how he takes it. Fare thee well. Farewell. Fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Will you be sworn at that word? Not too fast. Soft. Soft. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam. Run after that same peevish messenger. He left this ring behind him. Tell him I'll never. And if he comes this way again tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi, B. Malvolio. Madam, I will. I know not what. <laughs> Will you stay no longer? No, sir, Antonio. You must know my name is Sebastian. My father left behind him myself and a sister, both born within the hour. Before you took me from the sea, was my sister drowned? Alas, the day. Lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, yet was accounted beautiful. Let me be your sir. <coughs> I am bound to the Count Rosino's court. Farewell. Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. She returns this ring to you. Sir, she adds, moreover, that you should never come again. Unless it be the report your lord's taking of this. If she took no ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it at her, and her will is that it should be so returned. There it lies! <laughs> Forbid my outside have not charmed her. <laughs> oh, she loves me, sure. For a lady, she were better than a dream. My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she mistaken seems to dote on me. What will become of this? Time, thou must untangle this, for it is too hard a knot for me to untie. So poor Viola, in the middle of a love triangle. And to add to the chaos, Sir Toby is having a noisy, drunken party. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Andrew, not to be 
a bed after midnight is to be up B times. I know. <laughs> to be up late is. To be a blitz. <laughs> <laughs> well, therefore, let us eat and drink. A stoop of wine, Raya. Oh, no, my. <laughs> Come, let's have a song. Brush up your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Brush up your Shakespeare. And the women you will wow. <laughs> Just to claim a few lines from Othello, and they'll think you're a hell of a fella. <laughs> if your plumber responds with your flatterer, tell her what Tony told Cleo Patter. <laughs> if she fights with her clothes, you are mussing. What are clothes much ado about nothing? Brush up your Shakespeare. And they all cow tell. Brush up your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Brush up your Shakespeare. And the women you will wow. If your goyles are Washington Heights Street, treat the kid to a midsummer's night dream. If she then won't in all by herself night. Let her rest every 11th or 12th night. If because of your heat she gets comfy, set with lay on and lay on me, Duffy. Brush up your Shakespeare, and they all kowtow. For suit, and they all kowtow. Thanks, thou, and they all kowtow. We trout, and they all your ears. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. For Monsieur Monvolio is a kind of Puritan. He thinks that all that look upon him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge work. Mariah plans to play a twelfth night trick on Malvolio. She <laughs> will drop a love letter where he will find it. Tell me, what wilt thou do? I will drop some epistles of love in his way. I can write very like my lady, your niece. Excellent. By the letters that thou wilt drop, he will think that she's in love with him. Oh, you will <laughs> tell the admirable. Lord Royal, I'll plant you two and let the fool make a third, for he will find the letter. For this night, to bed. Farewell. <sighs> she's a good wench. <laughs> She's a beagle, a true bread, one that adores them. Come, send for more money. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, come. It's too late to go to bed now. Come, night, come. Brush up your Shakespeare and they all bow down. She's being in love with the Duke, who loves Olivia, who loves Viola. The Duke calms his feelings with sad music about lost love. Give me some music. That piece of song, no, that old and antique one, 
that we heard last night. He is not here that should sing it. Feste, the jester, that the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. Go fetch him. <laughs> Come hither, boy. If ever thou shouldest find love in the sweet pains of it, remember me. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love itself is throned. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon something that it loves. Hath it not, my boy? A little. What type of woman was she? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. What's yours, in faith? Of your years, my lord. <laughs> Too old by heaven. Let your love be younger than thyself. Let's all the rest get peace. The Duke again sings Viola to woo Olivia for him. Viola almost tells how she loves him herself. Now, Cesario, get thee to thine same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. But you must. Say that some lady as perhaps there is hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? The Duke does not believe women can love strongly. There is no woman's heart so big that can hold so much. Mine is as restless as the sea. I, I know too well. Women's hearts are true as we. My father had a daughter who loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, <laughs> I should your lordship. Viola tells the tale of the pale girl with the broken heart. She sat silent and still as a statue of patience. Now, what is her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love. But like concealment, like a worm, I the bud beat on her damaged cheek. She pined and thought. And with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at truth. Was this not love indeed? But died thee of thy sister's love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house, and brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, to her haste. Give her this jewel. And now, Sir Tony, Come thy ways, Mariah. We shall fool in black and blue. Get thee into the box tree. Malvolio's coming down this walk. I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Why thou there? <laughs> Malvolio enters, dreaming about being married to Lady Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Tis but fortune, tis all fortune to be. How? A Malvolio. Ah, rogue, having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me, sitting in my velvet gown, to ask. For my kinsman, Toby. Bolts and shackles. I frown the while and perchance wind my watch. I'll play with some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? <laughs> <laughs> I extend my hand to him thus, saying, So Toby, you must amend your drunkenness. Ow, scab. <laughs> what employment have we here? <laughs> By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas. Her ewes. Her teas. To the unknown beloved. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. If this should be thee, 
Malvolio, hang thee! <laughs> I may command where I adore, but silence, like a Lucretia knife with bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. <laughs> a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <coughs> I may command where I adore. Well, she may command me. <laughs> I serve her. She is my lady. And, and that last bit, if I could make that resemble something in myself, M O A I M Malvolio! <laughs> Why that begins my name! Did I not say he would work it out? <laughs> M, but then A should follow, but O does, and then I comes behind. M O A I. <laughs> Every single one of those letters is in my name! <laughs> Soft, here follows prose. In my stars I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them! <laughs> the letter tells Malvolio to be rude to Toby, and to dress and act in certain ways. Be opposite thy kinsmen, and remember who did commend thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember. My lady loves me. <laughs> she did commit my yellow stockings at the plate. She did wish to see my leg. <laughs> Cross guarded. <laughs> I am happy. And here is a postscript. Thou canst but choose, know who I am, but thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, smile still, dear my sweet. Oh, I will smile. <laughs> I will do everything if thou wilt have me. <laughs> Why? I could marry this witch for this device? What? Thou hast put him in such a dream that he must run mad. If he will see his mark is approached before my lady, he will come to her in yellow stockings. <laughs> A fashion she detests, and he will smile upon her. Will it not be so unsuitable that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt? If you will see it, follow me. Oh, thy most excellent devil. Give me your hand, sir. What is your name? Cesario, fair princess. You're a servant to the Count Orsino, you. Then I pray you never speak again of him. Then westward, oh! Stay! Tell me what thou thinkst of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. Cesario? By the roses of the spring, by the
by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything. I love thee so. Love, sought is good. Forgiven on sought is better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has. So adieu, good madam. <laughs> I'll not stay a jot longer. Mary, I saw your niece doing favors to the Count's serving man. I saw it. Did she see, she see thee the while? As clearly as I see you now. Mariah said Olivia wanted to make Sir Andrew chef. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. She did show favor to the youth to put fire in your heart. You should have banged youth into dumbness. Challenge the Count's youth to a fight. Hurt him in 11 places! Will either of you bear me a challenge? Go. Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. <sighs> <laughs> if you will laugh yourself in the stitches, follow me. Malvolio is in yellow stockings. <laughs> A cross carter? Most villainously, <laughs> he does obey every point of the letter. He does smile his face into more lines as in the augmentation of the new map of the Indies. <laughs> I know my lady will strike him. <laughs> oh, bring us, bring us where he is. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sebastian and Antonio look around for Sirius. But Antonio must not be seen, for he once fought in a war against the I could not stay behind you. These parts to a stranger often prove rough. My kind Antonio, thanks. What to do? I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes of the things of fame that do renown this city. I do not without danger walk these streets. Once, in a sea fight against the Count, I did some service. Do not walk too open then. Hold, sir. Here's my, here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant, is best to lodge. Why are your purse? Happily your eye may light upon some desired purchase. <laughs> <laughs> I will be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant! Olivia is so much in love with Viola that she sends for her again. He'll come. I speak too loud. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He does nothing but smile. Surely the man is tainted in his wits. Sweet! <laughs> Lady! <laughs> Yellow stockings? Thy yellow stockings. 
and wish to see thee cross a garden. Why, this is very Midsummer Madness. <laughs> Got him? <laughs> the young gentleman of Count Arsinos has returned. I'll go to him. Toby to look to me! <laughs> Nothing can come between me and my hope. Sir Toby and the others decide to treat Malvolio like a madman and lock him up. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Pray he not be bewitched. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Oh. Go hang thee all! You are idle, shadow things! Come, we'll have him in a dark room and down. My niece is already in the belief that he is mad. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sir Toby and friends, play the duel between Sir Andrew Augecheek and Viola. Here is the challenge. Oh, read it. <clears throat> you, waylay thee going home. Look to thyself, Sir Andrew Agachi. He is with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, scout for him at the corner of the orchard. Draw and swear horrible. Away! Now, I will fright them both. Here he comes with your niece. Come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. Goodness! God save thee! Thy hunter attends thee at the orchard's end. Be quick and deadly. Uh, I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. What is he? He is a knight, but he is a very devil. I am no fighter. I beseech you to know if this knight whom I fenced him is. I will do so. Stay you here until my return. Pray you, do you know of this matter? He is indeed, sir, most skillful, bloody, and fatal. Why? He's a very devil! No, I'll not fight him. Come on, there's no remedy. Pray God defend me. Come on, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. Come on. I do assure you, tis against my will. Put up your sword. If this youth has done offense, then I take the fault upon me. Hold, here comes the officer. The police come to arrest Antonio as an enemy of the country. Antonio? I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. I must obey. This comes with seeking you. My necessity does make me ask you for some of that money. Uh, what money, sir? <laughs> I'll lend you something. Will you deny those kindnesses that I have done for you? I know of none. Nor I know you by any voice or feature. Come, sir, I pray thee go. The suit that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. Oh, Sebastian, shame. <laughs> he named Sebastian. My brother went in this fashion, color, ornament. For him I imitate. Oh, with his proof, tempest, or kind, and salt ways, fresh in love. Very dishonest boy, and a coward! Uh, I'll after him! <laughs> the twins cause more confusion. Will you not believe that I was sent
friend here. <laughs> For you. Go to, go to. Let me be clear. Oh, 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 no, no, I do not know you. Nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come to speak with her. Nor is your name not to Master Cesario. <laughs> Nor this, not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. Come, sir! Here's for you! Why, there's for thee! And there! And there! And there! Ah! Are all the people mad? Come on, sir! Hold! a dream. <laughs> now Sir Tolby and the others continue to taunt Malvolio, who is still in prison because he is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Son, and this pearl she gave me. Yet it is not like this. Where is Antonio then? I could have sworn I left him at the elephants. Or did I? Oh, I am mad, or else the lady is mad. But here the lady comes. Olivia wants to marry Viola's twin. Do not doubt this haste of mine. And if you mean well, go with me and this holy man and plight me the full assurance of your faith. What do you say? 
I'll follow this good man and go with you. Having sworn truth ever will be true. face well, notable pirate. What foolish boldness brought thee to thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir. That most ingrateful young boy over there, from the rude sea his life I gave him. His false cunning denied me mine own purse, which I recommended to his use not a mere half an hour ago. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. <laughs> Here comes the countess. Oh, now heaven walks on earth. But, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth has tended upon me. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Countess Olivia, still so cruel. <laughs> still so constant, lord. Oh, whatever shall I do? Come, boy, with me. No, whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. <laughs> <laughs> husband? Her husband, Sirrah! No, my lord, not I! Father! Father! What dost thou know hath newly passed between this youth and me? A contract, a paternal bond of love, strengthened by the interchangement of your rank, <laughs> and all the ceremony sealed by my testament. <laughs> oh, thou disassembling cub, farewell and take her! My lord, I do protest! For the love of God! <laughs> A <laughs> surgeon, send one for Sir Toby. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The court gentleman, one Cesario. He's the very devil. My gentleman, Cesario. That is him. You broke my head for nothing. I never hurt uh, you. You drew your sword upon me without cause. Has hurts me, and there's the end on it. Get him to bed. Let us hurt thee look to. I am sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsmen. You throw a strange regard upon me, and I do perceive that that offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, but even for the vows that we made yet so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> one face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. Antonio, how the hours have tortured me since I am lost thee. Sebastian, how have you... <laughs> Make division of yourself. <laughs> I had a sister whom the blind waves have devoured. What kin are you to me? And Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So I'm he to his watery tomb. Are you a woman? I should let my tears fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. I am Viola. <laughs> so comes it, lady, you are betrothed to a maid and a man. Boy, thou hast said a thousand times thou shouldst love a woman but to me. Here's my hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. Uh, the captain that did first bring me on shore hath me made garments. He is now endurance at Malvolio sweet. Uh, bring him hither. But alas, they say he's much distressed. How does he throw? Uh, truly, uh, he, he has, uh, here writ a, a letter to you. Uh, by the Lord, madame, you wrong me. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on. The madly you. Mabileo. <laughs> You wrote this? Bring him hither. The Duke proposes to Viola. Since you have called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall be from this time your husband's mistress. Madam! <laughs> you have done 
me wrong. Notorious wrong, lady. Peruse that letter. You must not deny it is your hand. Tell me why you bade me come to you, smiling and, and cross guarded <laughs> And to put on yellow stockings. <laughs> and then, acting this, why you suffered me to be imprisoned. I was kept in a dark room and then visited by the priest. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. Malvolio, tis not my hand, tis Mariah's hand. <laughs> Good Madonna. <laughs> Hear me confess. Most freely, I, I do confess. Myself and Sir Toby set this device against Malvolio here. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance. In recompense, uh, whereof he, he hath now married her. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I will be revenged! Upon the whole pack of you. <laughs> he has been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. Now a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Cesario, come, for when you were known as a man, but in other instances seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which inherit shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep.